Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called The Things Humans Excel At, written by Farmwitch4275. I write to the Galactic Council of the Grand Federation. This is not a greeting. It is a dire and serious warning. It pertains to humans. Humans are, well, very strange. In terms of intelligence, they rank dead center of smart and stupid. I know men who can direct an entire asteroid field out of the star system, mine it clean of any resources, and do it all with no help from AI or targeting systems. Those same men can't tell me how to restock a vending machine. I know a human who can't answer simple math questions like 5 plus 5, but the same man knows how to fix a fusion reactor without nothing more than a pipe wrench. In terms of combat ability, we will not use humanity's super soldiers, the legionnaires as an example here, just an average human grunt. I know riflemen that can't hit the broadside of a barn with a Gatling gun, but place a knife in their hands and not even the Mantodian Esvesserator drone can stand up to them. Adversely, find a human with a long-range weapon like the human sniper. These guys can hit a target the size of a coin two miles away in a hurricane. These same men will never hold any chance in a boxing ring. Humanity is in dead center of the sapient average. Remarkable for any species, they represent the fastest and slowest members of any race, the smartest and dumbest of any race, the hardest fighters and the weakest pacifists of any race. This is why humanity as a whole has found such unique niche within galactic society, and why everyone seems to both love them and hate them at all at the same time. This is why you can find a human in almost any position, anywhere it is easy for them to live there, or any place that agrees with their biology. They adapt to almost any situation they find themselves in. Given enough time, funding, or reason to stick around, they become indistinguishable from one's own kin by the sheer tenacity with which they engage their duties. But this is not why I am writing. I wish not to sing their praises. I come with a dire and sincere warning. Humans are far, far, far more dangerous than even they give themselves credit for. The average human. This is certain, except in one single aspect. Children. Specifically juveniles or younglings as the rest of us call them. We are all protective to one degree or another, with our broods this much is certain. But humans take it to a whole different level. I speak specifically of one particular human, a shipmate of mine, Kerry, a human crew member I hired on the recommendation of my harbor master, an average human by all accounts. She came on board as a ship's janitor, but quickly became enamored with the crew's kids. Several juvenile, Raxus, Oksani, and a few others. And within a few weeks, she had become their de facto babysitter, as she called it. Aside from her duties of stocking vending machines and cleaning the ship, she spent her free time playing with the younglings aboard the ship. Knowing humans, we never questioned this. They were always friendly and could be trusted beyond the norm, just like any other race. I thought humans were just abnormally normal. Until I encountered the one single aspect of humanity that puts them far above the rest of us. All of us are inferior to this one aspect by any measure possible. If Carrie's words were anything to go by in this respect, then this is something that extends to the entire species, as opposed to just a few members. If what Carrie tells me is true, then it means one of two things. We have an incredibly powerful ally or an extremely dangerous and nigh unstoppable enemy. I prefer to think of the former, to be honest. In order to understand what is going on, I shall explain. During a routine cargo trip, my ship and its crew were hauling cargo to a human outer world colony to trade in red spice and medical equipment. Simple stuff. We were attacked by a gang of Rathani pirates, specifically the King's Masons. Yes, those King's Masons. The kind of gang that single-handedly wiped out a Federation escort fleet and held the Rathani Queen hostage for two months. It started with the comms hail, Stand and deliver. 
They said, as their ion cannon shut our ship down, and they readied to board us. But in the space of a few minutes, the entire crew was on station, ready to fight them off. Unfortunately for, well, as it turned out, them, they skipped the main boarding ramp and decided instead to cut a hole through the cargo bay to work their way up in the ship. This put them in direct contact with her. A group of them blasted through the area, looting whatever cargo they could carry, and began to cut their way into the ship. All was going well for them as they looted the ship and broke doors open to get into personal quarters and steal any valuables. Then, uh, one poor bastard stumbled across Carrie and the kids under her care. She stood her ground, refusing to surrender. He beat her hard. She refused to surrender. She told the kids to hide in their game of hide-and-seek. He tried to grab one of the kids as it vanished into the maintenance hatches. She stopped him just in time, allowing the child to escape. He said an offhand comment about how he would make the juvenile flavored soup. Carrie, with a wild banshee scream of hatred, rage and anger, jumped on him, caught him off guard by the sudden attack. He was unable to do anything about it, as with lightning speed, she pinned him to the ground. And then, with naught but a bare hands, began ripping his teeth out. I will beat this so there is no room for ambiguity. With her bare hands, she started ripping his teeth out. Following her enraged banshee wailing and the Rathani warrior brood curdling screams of agony, the other warriors soon followed, only to meet similar fates. Gary began to cut a merciless swath of death and sadistic insanity as she severed legs, cut off heads, and beat soldiers to death with her own severed limbs. It was during this massacre that I and many crew members saw for the first time the sight of a Rathani warrior experiencing the emotion of fear. Kerry found one Rathani warrior and stole one of the grenades during her rampage. She shattered the poor bastard's jaw, jamming it open. She pulled the pin on the grenade and shoved it in his gob. The look on that poor bastard's face will haunt me to the day that I die, as he helplessly claws at his own belly to try and get the grenade out. I will never forget the sheer terror in his eyes as the grenade exploded. Being showered in the guts and bone shrapnel from one of their own kind caused the rest of the pirates to flee the scene. The ship managed to dislodge itself before escaping, narrowly avoiding Kerry's hurling of expletives and curses at them as they ran back to the void with their tails between their legs. Kerry returned to a modicum of normal as the ship was restored to basic functionality. We made an emergency jump to the human colony world and broadcasted an emergency. Human fleets were on us within minutes. Kerry, however, suddenly seemed normal. The look in her eyes faded, her breathing slowed, and her expression calmed. She cried out, Ollie, Ollie Oxenfree, I give up. The pizza's on me. Within moments of this exclamation, the younglings, all unharmed and untouched, suddenly appeared and tackled her to the ground as if she was a dainty feather. She wrestled with them before they all claimed victory and with a concerted effort carried her to the mess hall. We told the humans that helped us of everything Carrie did, questioning if she was okay. They simply shrugged and explained that what Kerry did was, quote, too lenient. I've spent the better part of the last 200 hours engaging in research this topic, and all results are the same. Humans, regardless of the species in their care or even vicinity, are psychotically protective of any juvenile under their care or even in their vicinity. Humans with no connections to any people involved will, without hesitation, on sensing a juvenile of any species in danger, will rush headfirst into that danger with no regards to their own safety. It has occurred too many times on and off record to be any kind of coincidence. This effect seems to be dramatically more pronounced with their own children, or even family and friends. You, my counsel, May use this information however you please. I, however, must warn you to the absolute degree. Do not, under any circumstances, harm a child of any kind in the presence of a human. Period. You risk horrible, merciless death at the hands of a creature whose parental instincts are so mind-numbingly strong they defy 
all logic, reason, and even biology. Under those average bodies and within those average minds lies an unstoppable beating heart of the single most dangerous force in the universe. Parenthood. You have been warned. Sincerely, Praxis Thran, captain of the Lightbringer cargo ship, Human Space Epsilon Station. End of story. There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that. I would just like to thank our T5 members. Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177, and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.